Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hi everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explore. My name is Ramneet and I am a visual artist. I mainly work in mediums of drawing, sound and installation. And I'm excited to be doing this workshop with you today. So this month's theme is surprise and together we will be exploring and discovering surprises through a drawing technique called frottage. So what is frottage? The term frottage comes from a French verb frotter, which means to rub. It is basically a drawing method that involves capturing textures from different objects or uneven surfaces by rubbing a drawing tool on a paper. It's a very fun and interesting way of drawing, and I also use a lot of frottage in my own art practice. So let's talk about the materials we need for today. So firstly, you're gonna need some paper to draw on, and you could use any kind of paper. It could be a smaller or a bigger paper, it doesn't really matter. You could use a simple copier paper, you could use some colored paper if you want. You could use something like this. Um, it's a tissue wrap, right? So you could use uh, any kind of paper, basically. Just make sure the paper you're using is not too thick. And next, you'll need something to draw with. You'll need your drawing tool. You could use crayons. You could use different colors of crayons. You could use pastels. Um, you could use color pencils. Or you could simply use a graphite pencil. Or you could also, oops, you could also use a graphite stick. I really like this tool. It's kind of like a jumbo crayon, but it's made of graphite. And lastly, the fun part, you're gonna need different textures. So you can collect some objects or materials that you think have some interesting textures or patterns to it. Coins are a really good example. So you can see the coin has a really interesting engraving on it. So we could use this texture to create our frottage drawings, right? Or you could use something like this piece of jewelry. This one also has a really interesting design to it. Or you could use keys, 
you could use hair brush you could also use some natural objects like a leaf or branches or flowers and you can also use a tree bark trees has really interesting and uneven surface to them i think these these could create some really interesting textures while choosing these objects just consider collecting the ones that have a raised texture or surface as it will create more interesting impressions on paper so feel free to pause the video here and take some time to explore and gather your materials and objects and i'll see you back here soon to start creating fertage drawings and discovering surprises along the way okay so welcome back to the video and i hope you all gathered some objects and i hope you had fun collecting your objects all right so i have a variety of items or objects on my table already before we get started you want to make sure that the surface you are placing your objects on is smooth and flat if your table or desk has a grainy texture like mine you might end up getting that texture of table in your drawing along with the texture of your objects so to avoid this you can just place a smooth piece of paper on your table to create a flat working area right okay so i think i'm gonna start with the coins all right i'm gonna place my coins on the paper i don't really have an image in mind i'm just placing them randomly on the paper so once you have your objects placed on the table you're gonna grab your you're gonna get, grab another piece of paper which is your drawing surface right so once you have your drawing paper on top of your objects you can hold the paper steady with one of your hands while making the rubbing or you could also tape down your paper to the table right got some masking tape here and I'm gonna secure the paper to the table so that it doesn't move a lot while making the rubbing right just like that all right and now we need our drawing tool so I might use these crayons and of course you can use any drawing tool of your choice, right? So if you're using crayons, you do have the option to use the tip of the crayon, but in my experience, it's better to take the wrapper off completely. So I already took the wrapper off from my crayons. So you want to have that naked crayon with you and you're gonna use it sideways. So you can actually use the edge of the crayon to make your rubbing. So you wanna have a good grip on your, on your crayon and you could use your fingers and thumb to kind of like pinch it and hold it this way, right? I'm just gonna put the purple one here. Okay, so I think we'll start doing the rubbing. And since the object is covered with the paper, I'm not really able to see where my objects are, right? So you can actually touch your paper slightly and you can actually feel where the objects are, right? So I think I figured out where my coins are. And once you have that figured out, you can go ahead and you can start rubbing gently 
on the paper. Okay, let's do it. See? And as you rub, you should start to see the texture of coin appearing on the paper. Just like that. See how, how simple this technique is? I think I'm gonna use a different color for the next coin. I'm repeating the process again. I'm holding the crayon sideways and I will start rubbing it, rubbing it gently on the paper. Right. And there you go. And you can definitely experiment by using different colors. I'm gonna put the coins away and I think I'm gonna try another object hmm. let's see maybe I'll try this piece of jewelry so again I don't really have any image in mind and I haven't had have anything planned ahead so I'm just trying to go with the flow and I'm trying to uh, have fun and I'm trying to have fun with the process right so you should never worry about your result you should never worry about the final outcome it's all about the experimentation and the exploration and just having fun with the process right okay so for this one I think I might use a different tool Mm, okay, let's see what happens if I use a graphite stick. Do you think I'll be able to get a different texture? Do you think it will be darker or lighter? Let's find out. Again, I'm repeating the process. I'm slightly touching the paper to figure out where the object is. And then I'm rubbing gently with my drawing tool. You see, it's already picking up these intricate details of the metal chain. This turned out to be really good. I like it. So, and when you're making the rubbing, you might also wanna experiment with different pressures, right? For example, I'm gonna use the same object again, and I'm gonna use the same drawing tool as well to show you the difference. So what happens if you use less pressure? And what happens if you put more pressure on your drawing tool? So just experiment with different pressures and, and see what happens. So I think with less pressure, the image turns out to be a bit lighter and it's a bit um, softer and more subtle while using more pressure on my drawing tool, I am able to get a more sharper, darker, and a more defined image. So you could use this lightness and darkness to create interesting overlapping, right? Okay. Okay, so, hmm. Let's try something a bit softer, a, a, a softer material. Let's try using this yarn. Okay, again, I'm gonna lift my drawing paper up and I'm gonna take this piece of yarn here and 
I'm laying it flat on the paper. The fun thing about this technique for Taj is that you never really know what kind of patterns or what kind of textures might emerge on paper. Okay, so I have my yarn under the paper and hmm, maybe I will use a pink crown this time. So I'm repeating that process, just gently rubbing the paper with my crayon. So you see, you will start to see that fuzzy texture of yarn appearing on paper. And you can see the difference between these two textures, right? This one is more soft and more fuzzy while uh, the metal chain was more sharper and bolder. Right? And you can create more interesting effects by using a different color on top of the color you've already used. For example, I'm using a dark purple on top of this pink color to create some interesting shade and interesting effect. This turned out to be pretty amazing as well. So let's move on to something a bit harder, maybe keys. Okay, so I'm going to place this key underneath the paper, right? And I think I'm gonna use a graphite stick. There we go. Wow, this one looks pretty defined and really dark. And are you able to see all the bumps and ridges of the key? This is really interesting. And another cool thing you could do is by moving the same object and repositioning it on the surface to create some interesting patterns. For example, what if I use the same key to, I don't know, maybe create a flower, right? I'm gonna try using that. I'm gonna try doing that. So I'm placing it here. Then I'm going to use a red crayon. See, there you go. You can create some interesting images. You can create some interesting forms by repeating the texture of the same object. This one kind of looks like a star, but it also looks like a flower. I don't know what it reminds you of. Right? And let's try experimenting with something different. Maybe I'll try using a pair of scissors. Let's see what happens. Right. So, there you go. There you have it. 
so these are just a few examples of different objects that you can use to make frottage rubbings but remember the possibilities are endless so feel free to experiment with different objects and um, different textures and see what kind of image and see what kind of uh, forms you can create right you can also try going outside of your house or maybe in your backyard and you can try collecting some natural materials and i actually went for a little nature walk outside and i just collected some natural objects mostly leaves because i think leaves can be really interesting objects for frottage drawings they come in different shapes and different sizes and they have like this really unique texture to them right okay so first of all you will put your leaf on the table and make sure it is upside down because the most texture of the leaf is on its back side right so you want to have the side that has the stems and the veins and not the top one not the smoother one right so just make sure to put it upside down and then you grab your drawing paper and you will place it on top of your leaf and i'm gonna use a dark purple crayon and i'm gonna use it sideways so i'm really excited to see it's um what kind of textures we might get so I'm pushing it from the middle out to the edges of the leaf. Wow. This is this is really beautiful. It's so wonderful that it picked up all these um textures, all these details of the stem, the veins as well as the outline. Let's try using a different color. I am using the same leaf. Beautiful. Okay, I think I might use a different leaf this time. Maybe. I'll use the bigger one and maybe I will place it in the middle of these two longer leaves. I'm gonna give this one a try. And I'll use a graphite stick. Okay, let's try doing a different one. Maybe I'll use this entire thing. So don't be afraid to be creative and just play around with different combinations and uh, different tools and let them surprise you. Now let's try approaching our exercise a bit differently and this time instead of bringing your objects to your working station or to your table, 
we are going to carry our paper and drawing tools with us. So let's go on a journey of surprise and discovery together. So you could explore the space of your house, or you could go to the backyard, or you could go to a different room, you could go to the kitchen, to the living room, or you could even go outside of the house, but of course, with permission from your uh, parent or guardians. Whether you're at home or someplace else, like me in my studio, there are hidden gems all around us waiting to be discovered. So take a look around and think about what catches your eye. Is there something that you never really paid attention to before? Is there something you encounter every day, but you never took a closer look at it, right? You could really use those objects or surfaces or things for your portage drawings. It could be the walls of your house or maybe a wooden floor. Could be a chair you're sitting on. Could be a design in a piece of furniture. Or you could journey to your backyard. You could look at the fence around your house. It could be the pattern of a wire mesh or a rough brick wall or if you go outside of your house you could explore the texture of trees or of the pavements of the manholes or stairs or any architectural element so i'm going to do the same i'm currently in my studio at ubc and i'm gonna step outside of my studio and i'm gonna see if there is something interesting i could find and then later on, I will go outside the building and I will try um, making portage drawing from maybe trees or stones or pavements. So let's do it.
has inspired you to try your hand at frottage and to see the world around you in a new and creative way. And we've seen how something as simple and ordinary as a coin, a pair of scissors, a tree or even leaves can create such unique and unexpected drawings. And who would have thought that an everyday object or a surface could create such wonderful results and as you can see each drawing is unique and it's full of surprises and that's the magic of retouch you never know what you're going to get until you start rubbing so next time you're feeling uninspired or if you just want to try something new just take a look around your surroundings and you might find or discover something amazing that you can use to fuel your creativity all right so thank you so much for joining me on this journey i hope you all enjoyed the workshop and i hope you all have a good day bye